disliked. Disliking how you look in the finished product after you've been in front of a camera and recorded yourself, disliking what you see after you've recorded content, I think is a curse that absolutely plagues us all. But if you know why you're having such a visceral and strong response to this particular observation, I think it's relatively easy to sidestep. But you have to understand that it is an evolutionary and scientific, or there is an evolutionary and scientific reason for why you're responding the way you are. Hello, mates. My name is Terry Vaughan of TV Empowers. And in addition to teaching body language, I help struggling and albeit sometimes reluctant digital video content creators feel confident, relaxed, and ultimately authentic in front of a camera. Now, I thought, as this is my very first live, and I have no idea if I've got the tech set up for this, what better way to get started in front of a video doing live content, talking about how we all respond, typically, most of us do at least, to how we look when we sit and have to edit, because if you don't have a team of people helping edit the content that you are trying to make, you're the one that's going to have to sit there and listen to yourself over and over again. And knowing how to overcome the hurdle of disliking what you see, I think is critical to being consistent with creating video content. So we have a couple of people that are joined and I'd love to hear from you before I just ramble on and get started with this thing. Where are you from? Where are you watching from? And are you consistently creating video content already or is it something you've avoided doing? Because I think most either business owners or entrepreneurs, leaders, getting in front of a camera is often one of those hurdles that we avoid. We make secondary to just about anything else that we can do in our working day other than creating video content. I know for years I was very reluctant to record myself. I, I do just about anything else when it comes to social media. I'd release pictures and images or words of wisdom, motivation, anything other than record consistent content. But I realized having been on Top Shot, which was a competitive shooting show on the History Channel, that video is singularly and arguably one of the most powerful mediums we have at our disposal. And of course, it's free. And I came to this reluctant conclusion, because after doing Top Shot and filming the show and it coming out and airing, when I would go out to speak at events, at conferences, or I go networking, or if I just was out and about shopping sometimes, I would have people approach and talk to me as if they knew me. Now, this was always somewhat weird for me, because being an introvert, I don't necessarily warm up very quickly to people. I like to take my time. I I observe, I listen, and eventually I usually warm up. But people would come up and start talking to me like we knew each other. And being a former military guy as well, I was always suspicious of this when it first started happening. But I realized after a short while, because I'm a bit of a dunce, and but eventually the message got through, I realized that these people did feel like they knew me. Them watching me on Top Shot, they had invited me and, of course, the rest of the cast and crew into the living room. They had observed I had been a guest in their home. So video resulted in them feeling like they already knew me, which once I got past feeling a little bit suspicious about this entire thing, I realized this is incredibly powerful, especially for an introvert as I am, where small talk is a struggle. This resulted in not having to necessarily work as hard at the small talk, the things that I would normally struggle with anyway, because people were taking care of that already. And then when I started creating more consistent video content and go to networking or events where I was speaking, people would come up having watched those videos and would immediately feel like they already knew me. The conversation would just flow naturally, especially now that I was prepared for this particular phenomenon. Creating and using video content as a means to introduce yourself, so to speak, or stay at the front of mind to your current contacts, but also to pull in connections beyond your immediate first line of connections is incredibly powerful because people get to know you. But most people only do social media postings as professionals using superficial means of connection. Now, there's nothing wrong with posting some pictures, 
sharing words of wisdom and using those mediums as a means to connect. But you're only superficially connecting. And oftentimes with words of wisdom, motivational postings, then they're very often, they're not even our words, they're somebody else's. So even though it may resonate with you and what you say may resonate with somebody else, it doesn't create an emotional connection. It doesn't give someone an opportunity to watch, observe, learn who you are, hopefully like what you do, or what you have to say in terms of sharing information with them. It doesn't build an emotional connection the way that video content does. And for all those of you who perhaps are not entrepreneurs, business owners or leaders, and perhaps are in a regular corporate job, the new shift is not just video content, but live, live video. Sending out a stream of information that's raw, uncut, where anything in terms of tech can happen so that people can see you in an unedited format. Live video is where recorded con consistent content is from three, four, five years ago. Now everything's moving to live. And in case you have a regular corporate job and feel safe that you won't ever have to necessarily get in front of a camera, I have some stats I would like to share with you. Over 62% of companies plan to adopt live broadcasting as a part of their ongoing marketing, brand awareness, or even internal communications, depending on the size of the company. They plan on using live content, which means at any point in the, in the not too distant future, somebody could sit you down in front of a camera, fire the thing off and say, tell us about yourself or tell us why you like working here or a multitude of other questions. So even if you have a regular corporate job and at this point you feel somewhat safe that you may never have to get in front of a camera beyond a Zoom conference call, it's going to happen. And the other numbers I've got here are coming straight from LinkedIn as well. So 62% of companies are going to adopt some sort of live broadcasting. 73% of business-to-business -business marketers say video positively impacts their ROI. So when you think about creating video content, other than perhaps the equipment, there's very little cost involved. So any return that you get, any interaction, any feedback that you get or brand awareness or connections that you may not have been able to make any other way, it's all relatively cheap. If you don't even have to pay for ads, you can create video content, stream it out and pull people in. So in terms of ROI for any other type of social media, I don't think there's anything else that comes even close. LinkedIn also says that 24 times more comments occur with live video content versus native streams. And native video on LinkedIn is still really underutilized by most professionals for the same reason that it's utilized less across a broad spectrum of other platforms. It's frightening to get in front of a camera. LinkedIn also says that seven times more reactions occur from live video than native. So there are many reasons why you should be creating consistent video, but there's even more reasons given where we're going to, to get used to being live and delivering your information and helping people either via LinkedIn or YouTube or Facebook, or maybe even all of them. But it's very hard to be relaxed, feel confident, and be authentic if you don't like the way you look. So let's discuss why most of us at least don't enjoy that aspect of creating video in the first place. When we are first born, day one babies, they can only focus visually on eight to 12 inches away from them, which of course, coincidentally, is the perfect distance for looking at mom or dad's face. And it seems like very unfair that babies can only see at that, at that point for a few days or in a few weeks after being born. But ultimately, this is an amazing evolutionary programming because it means from day one, we are very much facial centric. We look to faces first. We want to see the emotion. That's how we engage. Our eye contact between us and other people is, is so important. All of these factors come into play and it starts at day one. That means from the moment you are born, 
and you look into mom or dad's eyes, you are already starting to learn the importance of reading faces. Now, your brain is a pattern recognition predictive machine. It now takes in all of the information that's subjected to every single day and compares what it's getting right now to what it knows and has built upon experience to be true from previous days, previous months, previous years. In other words, everything that comes into your brain is being compared to what your brain already knows. We grow up looking at a mirror reflection, a mirror image of ourselves, and that's what we get used to. We get used to that version of ourselves, all of the imperfections, the nuances, the way that we think we look is reflected in the mirror. When we record video content and it flips the image for us and shows us the truth of who we are that everybody else is used to seeing, it messes with your head because it's outside of what your brain is used to. It's outside of the norm for what your brain's used to recognizing and seeing every single day. And it, this comparison upsets the core part, the primitive part of your brain. It doesn't like the fact that you are or look different to what you're used to. That's where the pattern recognition within our brains is so powerful, but also in this regard, it, just, it can ruin your day when it comes to seeing yourself on video because your brain is going, that's not me, but you know it is. It looks like an imposter. It's a doppelganger. All of your imperfections are now reversed and as such are exacerbated and reversed and they show up extra loudly to you. And anything that falls outside of the norm for your brain that's a break in the pattern or the habits that it's used to is cause for alarm at different degrees, all the way from low up to full on panic, depending on your dislike of what you see in your video content. But if you know that your brain is going to respond this way, if it's going to have a, a visceral negative emotional response to seeing yourself on camera, on video, it can be a little easier not easy, but a little easier to work around that particular obstacle. Perhaps it makes seeing yourself less of a shock this way and a bit more of a surprise. And of course, we can all live with a surprise. It's the shock and horror that, that often upsets us enough to stop us wanting to create consistent video content. If you also know that not having consistent video content out there to be found by people is, I think we're at a point where it's it's a little weird if you if someone can't find video that you've created so they can get to know you. And now you know that even that, even though it's it's not being done away with, but it's being marginalized and minimized because people want more reality and less polish which is scary because at least with recorded video content, you can edit, tweak, reshoot, do whatever you need to do. But when you go live, it's raw. You have to have that natural sounding looking conversation with a camera that's really hard to do if you haven't already put in some time with recorded content. So creating consistent video content and then ultimately moving to live you can use your recorded time, getting used to talking to the camera to prep for going live. But live is where it's going and live is where you should be aiming to go with marketing, with brand awareness, with making this particular medium, medium available to others so they can get to know who you are. Because when they get to see you in this particular format, they learn to like, know, trust, and keep you top of mind. The next time they have something come up in your industry, your business, they have a problem at work, whatever it is, they know they can approach you. They know they can be comfortable. That, oh, we already know that person. They can come straight in and be honest about whatever it is they want to talk about, which is huge, especially if you happen to be anything like me and an introvert, where perhaps the small talk or those tiny, small words and introductions that we have with people can sometimes feel like a lot of hard work. If somebody feels like they know you, they'll come straight in, they'll go to it, and you'll know, okay, my video content is working for me, even if it's just awareness and building trust with people.
If you're watching this on LinkedIn and we haven't connected yet, it'd be great for you to go ahead and connect. If you're watching this recorded or after the fact uh, or live, sorry, on, on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell notification so that every time I go live and I post some content that will help you become more comfortable and confident in front of a camera, you don't miss out on what I post. So I'm going to see if now if I can figure out where the comments are on my live stream and hopefully answer any questions that you might have. So I have a question for you while we're, I'm figuring this out. How many of you already create consistent video content? How many of you are already in the trenches with making it? Or have you avoided making consistent video content because you don't like what you see at the end or for any other reason? All right, I think I found the comments down here. Yeah, okay, so uh, one question we have, how do you get in front of a camera and just go? Do you write a script? Do you have notes? Well, honestly, before going live, as this is my very first time, I practiced, 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 just out loud talking it through so that it could feel and, and feel to me at least like it's a conversation, even though I know that it's not. It's obviously very one-sided. But I practiced. I wrote out the whole thing. Then I took my whole outline down to some notes. Then I took it down to bullets. Then I took it down to just a few words. And then I knew, okay, I at least know I'm going to be able to approximately have a conversation with a camera and talk this whole thing through going from point to point rather than trying to remember a whole script. I think trying to memorize absolutely everything you think you want to say is too much. Your short-term memory just gets overloaded. And then when you forget certain points, I think it can send you into a tailspin. So I think it's better off, you're better off to practice, outline, practice some more, figure out where you kind of want to take it and then start whittling it down to bullets and then perhaps even just words so that when you get it in front of the camera and you press record or go live, it just kind of rolls off the tongue. You, you're familiar enough with the information that you're not trying to recite word for word things you've memorized. There's a tr another trouble with memorizing everything is it starts to come off as, as contrived or too robotic. And we don't want that. P you want it, people to see you as you really are. So if they do meet you at a networking event or some point in time somewhere else, the person that they, they come to talk to is exactly the same person they saw on video. The thing with live is it is raw. You will stumble over your words. You will get things wrong. You will have to think and look up in the air to figure out what you want to say next. But that's okay because that's ultimately what people want. They want to see the real you so that they can build up some emotional connection to you. All right, I think that was our last question. If you're on LinkedIn, we haven't connected, please go ahead and connect. If you're on YouTube, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you are made aware of any of the live times that I stream with more tips on how to be better in front of a camera or anything else that I cover coming up live. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you joining me. I look forward to seeing you again at the next live. Cheers.